Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm the Bearded Techie and I got another tutorial for you guys today. But first, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't like it, thumbs down all the way. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Any questions about the process, the hardware, anything like that, leave it in the comments below and let me know. But uh, so I've got a new tutorial for you guys today and it's something new for me as well as the channel. Uh, we're gonna be working on a PlayStation 4 today which is uh, much different than my usual stuff, which is PC and camera and photography, that kind of stuff. And so my buddy, he his fan died on this thing. So we're gonna be doing a fan replacement. And it's actually kind of a complex, um, a complex task because it requires really disassembling the entire PlayStation to get to the fan, which is, not very user friendly. I wish they would have designed this thing a little bit, I don't know, a little bit better to, you know, give it a better ease of use. I mean, when it comes to um, home servicing. But uh, as you all know, the PlayStation 5 sold out almost instantly, along with the Xbox Series X and Series S, and the same problem with Nvidia's new 3000 series graphics cards which can be attributed to bots and other things like that, people scalping, you know. But in the meanwhile, he still wants to play video games until he can get the PlayStation 5. So he asked me to go ahead and fix this for him. I'm not a console player, I'm a PC player, so this is not my PlayStation, but I will be going through all the steps on how to replace the fan, and we're gonna go through everything you need to do that. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the supplies you're going to need for this job. You're going to need a few tools and some optional things as well. So let's go ahead and get into the top down shot. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the tools you're going to need to do the job. So the first thing you're going to need is a really good light source. You're going to be working, you're going to want to be working in a really nice and bright environment. Um, it's probably not a good idea to do this at nighttime unless you really have a good set of lights to be working with. It would be even best if you could do it in the daylight. I myself am doing this at nighttime, but I have several nice and bright LED lights that I am using to perform this task. So next up, we have a PH1 Phillips head, and you can get this in any screwdriver kit pretty much. It's an, a pretty... Uh, it's not super tiny bit, but um, it's not super large either. And the next thing you're gonna need to have, the next tool you're gonna need besides the Phillips head, is going to be a T8 Torx bit. Now, the only caveat with this is it needs a security hole. Now you can see here at the very tip of this bit, there's a tiny little hole. So the Torx screws that are inside the PlayStation actually have a little pin that sticks up out of the, uh, the top of the screw. And that's to prevent people from, who don't know what they're doing from taking it apart and you know messing with stuff that they don't need to mess with, which is pretty much the biggest barrier to getting this job done is going to be having this bit. I will take a look after I'm done with the video and see if I can link something and I'll put that in the description below. And I also have a ratchet because my T8 bit is uh, made for quarter inch drive, but uh, it, of course if your T8 fits in a screwdriver or something, you obviously won't need that. The fan, of course, and uh, I linked the, I put a link in the description where you could get this. It only costs about 20 bucks on Amazon. The last uh, required material will be thermal paste. So I have, um, what is this? Arctic Silver brand thermal paste. You can use whatever you want. This is just something I already had from a previous build that I had done. So you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna definitely need thermal paste. Uh, I, I highly suggest that you do not reuse the thermal paste that is in the PlayStation because there's a, there's a very good chance that it's gonna be dry or, you know, not very, uh, it's not gonna be able to be reused. It's, it's never a good idea to, to reuse thermal paste. So you're gonna wanna get some thermal paste. And this is only like a couple bucks. This is another thing I will link in the description. I will link this one, uh, a cheaper one, and a nicer one, just in case you really wanted to go all out. And for the optional stuff, you're going to want a can of 
air and there's most likely going to be um, some type of dust buildup within the PlayStation, especially on the fan or the cooler or perhaps even the power supply. Um, just the way this thing is designed and there's no dust filters on it whatsoever. So this would be a good day, uh, uh, a good idea to have. And uh, if you don't have a can of air and you don't want to get one, you can probably use, uh, you know, your own air, you know, from your lungs. Um, or you could use maybe a paper towel and some type of cleaner, which is actually the next thing I suggest. Um, some type of um, glass cleaner and a paper towel. Now, this is not for the actual components. This is for the inside of the shroud. You do not want to spray this on the board or anything else that's sensitive to liquid. So this is just for the inside of the shroud where there's probably dust and grime built up, especially if you run your PlayStation anywhere near your kitchen while you're cooking, there's a chance that there could be grease in there. And if you smoke, if you're a smoker, that's probably actually one of the worst things you could do for your system is smoke near it because the tar from cigarette smoke will build up in there and gunk everything up and get really nasty and is actually very difficult to get out and I actually doubt that this could even take out the tar from cigarette smoke which I have seen before so all right let's go ahead and start disassembling this thing so let me move this stuff so the first step is going to be removing uh, the screws from the back there's a screw here there's a screw here here and here now my buddy already removed these screws before he gave me the PlayStation. I think that's when he realized this was going to be a much bigger task than he anticipated. So uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're Torx or Phillips or whatnot, but uh, I'm whether you have these tools, whether you if you have the tools that I mentioned before, you'll be able to get them out because they're either a Phillips or a Torx. Most likely a black Phillips, if I had to guess. So now that uh, if, once you get those four screws out, the next thing you're going to want to do is start removing the top cover. And to do that, you just want to carefully start prying on it, and it'll it'll uh, it clips in the front, the side. And then once you get the front clips off and then the side clips, it'll kind of slide back like that. And you're going to want to organize all this stuff uh, neatly on your, on your workspace just so that you don't accidentally uh, get things mixed up or put in the wrong place. It's best to work in the most organized fashion that you can. And then for the shiny side, it just slides that direction. And then... Oopsie. kind of pops up in the front too. Now the next thing that comes off is this, uh, it's cl a clear plastic piece here and it's actually a, a light diffuser. So um, there's three little or four little LEDs here that project into this piece of clear plastic, which gets diffused along the center and the front, most likely for power or, or something similar. So that's what we're going to start taking off next. And this is where your Torx bit is going to get used first. Now, my biggest suggestion once you start removing screws is to track the screws, which is easiest when you're working with a mat that is similar to this, where right? it's kind of got a grid pattern on it so you can lay out the screws in the same layout that you removed them. And just remember the orientation of the case when you remove the screws so when you put them down and you put them back you got the case in the same orientation so that you get the same screws into the same holes because sometimes uh, there's uh, screws that are different lengths or different widths that go in different places so you want to know where every screw goes really so let's go ahead and get into removing this uh, light diffuser here next up we're going to start working down this edge here from back to front and then we have a slightly larger Phillips here which is meant to hold in the hard drive so we'll remove this one and once we remove that we're going to go ahead and slide the hard drive out and it just slides out okay so we've gotten all the way down this side we got one more here and here uh, in the center which you could not see or access until you removed that plastic light diffuser so let's go ahead and remove those next once again, these are still all T8 Torx bits. Now, right here 
is the actual header for the fan. It comes up from the other side of the board and plugs in right here. And to remove that, you just lift up and straight up and it'll come out. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna need to do is um, flip the case over, remove the bottom panel, and start removing a few screws uh, from the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. Carefully pry and it'll start popping off. Okay. There we go. And it feels like it has uh, clips on the sides. So there's clips on this side and clips on this side. Um, none in the front, none in the back, but it does uh, slide into the front here. So there's kind of a uh, indent here where the actual, uh, the board slides down in like that. Next up, we're going to need to remove the uh, power supply, which is right here. This kind of uh, rougher plastic piece is the power supply. Now, the power supply is held in with one, two, three, four, five screws. We got these two here, these two here, and one here. These two with the clips are Phillips, and the other three are Torx. Okay, once you guys start putting this thing back together, uh, don't over tighten this stuff. You know, these are metal screws going into uh, a plastic housing, so it will be very easy to strip them. So be very careful. I mean, if it feels like it's tight, it's tight. You don't need to really torque it thing, this thing down. It's not gonna be vibrating. You're not gonna, it's not like a, it's in a vehicle or anything like that. Okay, so once we have those five screws out holding the power supply in, you just kinda gotta start working it out. And now you're gonna wanna unplug the uh, power supply from the board. So let's go ahead and pull that up and be careful. Don't pull directly on the wires if you uh, don't have to. Uh, sometimes these things are rather sensitive and delicate and you can yank one of these wires out and they're um, damn near impossible to get back into this plastic header. So be very careful with that. Three more things we need to disconnect here before we continue. Uh, first thing is going to be this little black wire here, which is for the Wi-Fi antenna. So we're going to carefully remove that and you're going to want to uh, try and pull directly up on it if you can. Uh, you don't really want to torque it one way or the other uh, because it's got a very small pin down in the board and you don't want to bend that or break that. So be, once again, be very... This, this all requires, you know, a, a, a decent level of care. So we're going to need to disconnect the drive uh, from the board. And there's two different places that the drive connects to the board. The first one is going to be this little connector down here, and we're going to disconnect it at the board. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, try and pick it up by the plastic or pull it out by the plastic connector and not the wires just because, uh, like I said, these wires are uh, easy to damage and they're near impossible to get back into this plastic header once you pull them out. Now, the next thing we're going to disconnect is this ribbon cable right here, okay? And in my opinion, it's easier to disconnect it uh, at this location here on the drive than it is down at this location on the board. But the only caveat to that is once you disconnect it from over here, you actually have to uh, pull the this ribbon cable through a, a hole in this metal piece, this metal shroud here. And uh, ribbon cables are notoriously uh, fragile, so just be careful when you're doing that. If you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, you can disconnect it from the board location instead. But I, I don't do it that way just because, in my opinion, it's just more difficult for me to disconnect and reconnect with my hand down in here than it is up here. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And to disconnect this, there's, there's this little metal clip right here. And you just kind of want to grab it with your grab it with your fingernail and pull back on it gently. It doesn't pop back. You just apply pressure, pull it back, and use this plastic tab here. Grab that and pull it out. And then release the metal clip. We have one more screw to remove down in here let's get this to focus okay which is right here it's a little black phillips head 
Now with that done, we can continue um, removing the top shroud. Be very gentle with it now that we have all this stuff uh, getting removed. Next thing we're going to do is get these two screws out here. And these two screws are actually holding the, uh, the cooler to the CPU. So just be careful um, with these screws when you're tightening it back up. They do have hard stops, so it's almost impossible to over tighten them, but um, still just be careful with them. It is uh, holding down something uh, relatively sensitive. So I usually go, you know, 50% on one side, then the other, and then total removal. And remember when you're putting this back on that you're putting it bend side down. So it, it this thing has a, a kind of a, a, con, a concave shape or convex, depending which side you're looking at it. You want the bend uh, to kind of hold up either side. So it's kind of like a teeter totter. Okay. And it's designed that way to help keep pressure on the screws and on the, on the center of the CPU essentially. Okay. There we go. And just take note um, on the bottom, on the bottom side of the shroud, once you take it off that there are these uh, thermal pads here. Uh, there may be a couple stuck to the actual uh, memory modules here. Um, or they may be stuck to this side. Just make sure you have all of them and that one didn't get uh, fall off somewhere onto your table because when you put this back together, you're gonna wanna make sure all these modules have the heat pads that were there when you started. Otherwise, you could start experiencing issues. So. There we go. Okay. And there is our CPU. Um, actually, the thermal paste doesn't look too bad on it. It is a little crusty around the edges, but that's actually uh, pretty normal. It does appear to be still kind of wet in the center, which is actually really good. It hasn't dried to a complete crisp. And uh, you can see here, uh, more thermal pads stuck to the metal shroud, but not all of them are there. The rust are actually stuck to the actual memory modules. So just make sure they're all there, like I said. And we're going to want to uh, wipe off the CPU and we're gonna wipe, want to wipe off um, the bottom of the cold plate here on the bottom of the cooler. So we will get to that um, in just a moment. So while we're here on this side, there are some screws uh, that we need to remove to get this metal shroud off. And then we can actually remove the fan and we can lift her out. Very good. And here's another reason we wanted the duster. So let's see if I can focus on that. Now you can see there's a healthy amount of dust here. Uh, not really on the other side, but there's definitely a healthy amount of dust here that you're gonna wanna blow out before you put this thing together. And like I said, if you don't have canned air, you can use a paper towel and wipe it off and then kind of blow the rest out uh, using some of your lung power. But uh, yeah, just make sure you get that cleaned out. And this is also a good time to maybe take um, some of the uh, glass cleaner and kind of just wipe off the dust on the inside of the shroud here. Uh, but mind the small metal clips. There are several small metal clips that are raised throughout the shroud, which you don't really want to bend those or break those off. Uh, so just be gentle when you're cleaning it and you should be okay. And it is held in with two screws and it has several uh, plastic posts that kind of um, come through the uh, actual housing of the fan. And there is one small little clip right here, which comes off and it just, it just slides down over this little piece of plastic here. There's just, um, it's just held on by friction. No screw, no glue, nothing like that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, blow this out off camera and kind of wipe it down uh, real nice and before I continue reassembling it. And just as a quick um, side note, when you're cleaning this stuff out, the shrouds, uh, the metal shroud, the plastic shroud, anything like that, um, don't spray the cleaner directly onto the shroud. 
spray it onto the rag and then wipe it down just because you don't want excess moisture getting into any of the nooks and crannies on here that could get there if you sprayed it on real heavy so just be careful when you're doing that and uh, spray it on the rag and then wipe it down this is also when you're going to uh, wipe the thermal paste off of the CPU and then you're gonna get ready and apply the new thermal paste now you don't need to get it out of every single little nook and cranny uh, around the CPU, but uh, just as long as it's completely off, uh, the top surface of the CPU should be all right. It's not a huge deal if there's still some around the border of it. Let's go ahead and get our new fan in. Let's see here, it's gonna go like this. There is some uh, minor differences between this fan and the old fan just because these holes don't perfectly line up you kind of have to uh, put a little pressure to get things to uh, line up but once you do it should be just fine so we've got the fan in make sure this cord is dangling over the edge so that we can loop it back up and you know what I just noticed with the new fan and the replacement fan this is the new one and this is the old one so uh, we're going to need to figure out how to make that work. Because obviously this connector is not going to fit into the same header on the board. It's just way too big and <clears throat> there's just not any way it'll ever work. So I don't want to have to buy a new fan. And I know he wants it back relatively quickly. So what we might do is snip these wires like somewhere back here to give us some decent length on the old fan and then snip the wires somewhere uh, over here on the new fan and just solder this old connector onto the new fan just so we can uh, avoid having to get a new a new fan or in which we when we order a new fan we also run the risk of encountering the same exact issue I'm gonna go ahead and solder that connector onto the new fan and we will continue from there. Now with the solder uh, all finished, we can continue with the reassembly process. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. Now remember once again to double check this metal shroud here for the heat pads that may have been stuck to it and the heat pads that are on the main board and just to make sure that none of them fell off because you really need to have those on there. Now we have the three small Phillips that we removed earlier. Now this is where we are going to apply the thermal paste. And you're just gonna put a few little dots on here and then kind of smear it around. You want a pretty even application. And there's really no right or wrong way. There's, you know, what people say and people do and everybody has their own technique but that's plenty that's actually quite a bit but I put it it looks a lot thicker on camera than it actually is but it's better to have a little too much than not enough so that's always been so once we get the board back in we're gonna put our other metal shroud back on and the first thing we're gonna do is the CPU cooler or the backplate, the CPU backplate here. And like I said, the first time when we were disassembling, I go about 50% on one side, 50% on the other. And then the rest of the way down.
just like that. And while we're here, we can snap in our fan connector and then just kind of tuck the excess away if you can. It's probably as good as it's gonna get. I did allow for a lot of extra slack, more so than the uh, original, just because I wanted to have uh, a decent amount to uh, work with. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back over before I put the other screws in and just make sure everything is still connected right where I want it. Okay, the next screw that's gonna go in is the small black Phillips that we removed from this corner here on the board. With it turned over again, you're gonna go ahead and plug uh, your Wi-Fi antenna back in as well as this little connector for the disk drive. Just like that and then tuck that back under this little clip. There's a little retaining clip on here to keep it out of the way. And same for the Wi-Fi connector. We're gonna run it down here. There's a little clip here and then a bigger clip over here. And then remember to try and um, install this exactly top down. You don't want it going in at an angle or anything just because that little pin in there is so tiny and so delicate, it could easily break off. So now that we've got our ribbon connected, reconnected up here, we've got this connector connected here, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna reconnected. Next up is the connector for the battery, or the power supply, excuse me. So you're gonna kinda hold it upside down like this. You're going to install the connector and then you're just kind of going to flip it over like that. And then you'll just kind of want to go straight down with it. Boom, done. And now that we've got that done, we can start putting our screws back in. So we'll do this one over here first. Okay, so that takes care of everything for the bottom of the case. We're done putting everything back in there. Now we can flip it back over to the top of the case and continue putting our screws back. And I'm just gonna go from one side to the other. I'm not gonna do a cross pattern or anything interesting like that. So, just a heads up. Do, 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 do. This is also where you would install your drive. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the light diffuser. And with this light diffuser, there's actually um, a strip of double-sided adhesive tape. It's actually um, kind of difficult to see but it's, it's right here. You can, you can kind of make it out, but it does have a tendency to shift or come off when you're removing the top cover. So this is a good time to realign that if it did come, uh, come loose. Okay, so for the most part, it's, uh, it's back together. Everything is where it should be, except for this top and bottom shroud, which I'm gonna go ahead and do now. I'm gonna do the bottom half first. And remember, it has this dip on this side, which is the front of the case. And the front of the case up here, let's get that to focus. The front of the case, you'll know it's the front because it has the disk drive, the two USB ports, as well as the Wi-Fi antenna. And you'll just kind of take that and kind of slant it and then slide it into that little dip in the front. And then the rest will just fit into place just like that. Next up, we're gonna do the shiny side of the uh, top shroud. And once you get it down right about here, then you're gonna slide it over. You see that? It goes 
out and then in, just like that. And then we'll do the other side here. Okay, just like that. And then after that, you would come back in and you would put in this, the four screws back here, the two on the top and the one in the middle here and on the bottom there. Or actually, I guess it's over here, but it doesn't matter. You'll get the uh, all the screws in the back end. Like I said, um, the guy who gave me this PlayStation to repair, he took those screws out so he has them, so I'm not gonna be putting them back in. Will be to uh, plug it in and turn it on and make sure everything works. But yeah, that's uh, the essential how to uh, install a fan in a PlayStation 4. All right, thanks guys. Well, see, that wasn't so bad after all, was it? <laughs> A little bit tedious, a lot of screws and a lot of screwing, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, once you get into it, there's a lot to do. But once you break it down into a few different steps, it's really not that hard at all. I know you guys could do it. And if you want to know anything about the tools that I used, there there is a list of the tools in the description below. If you missed what I said in the top down shot. So like I said, if you want to go ahead and look at the, that tool list as well as the optional um, component list of things you might want just in case that will be in the description below as well as a link to the fan on where I got that and uh, thanks again guys for stopping by once again if you're new to my channel please hit that subscribe button if you're not new to my channel and you're not subscribed go ahead please subscribe I appreciate that it means a lot to me and hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video and if you didn't like it go ahead feel free to hit the thumbs down button doesn't bug me in the least so thanks for that and I'll catch you guys next time beer techie signing out